I have this thing about seashells. I absolutely love them. And I pay attention to the weather and winds in hopes of finding conditions like this. It's not easy. It doesn't happen all the time. But holy smokes, when it does happen, there is no place I'd rather be. So we are going to experience this today, but I wanna tell you about a few things first. Today will be a story of persistence, the power of positive thinking, even when things do not go the way you expect them to and you unintentionally go for a little swim with all of your equipment. But let's start at the beginning. I do prepare if I can and I had been watching the winds. We had had quite a few days of winds. So I decided I definitely wanna go check out Fort Niners Beach. Now, it's a little dark right now. You can't use headlamps because turtle season is here. I saw this lump on the beach. Always, always check out the lumps. In this case, it happens to be garbage. It's a hat, I'm going to remove that from the beach, but you never know. Right now, the tide is coming in and it's 69 degrees. The tides were a little wonky this week, so this was gonna be really my best shot to really get seashells. So here we have a lovely lightning whelk. So this made me slow down, but I kind of feel like I'm racing against the clock. There's a spot down the beach I'm gonna to try to get to before the tide gets too high, but a couple of these seashells I could not resist. I'm gonna make a prediction. I think that that shell is gonna clean up really, really great. And if you're ready to see what else the wind left behind for us, let's go to the beach. Hello, beach friends. So we are here on Fort Myers Beach and the tide is so much higher than I expected it to be. It was supposed to be out, but I think the wind is pushing all that water in. So I am trucking. There is a spot, it's about two miles down the beach I'm gonna to try to get to. <laughs> I, so I got the sand dollar, but I'm yeah, barely, barely slowing down because again, there's this kind of spot I'm gonna to try to get to, yeah, I expected the tide to be way out at 0.3, whatever we just checked it at. Oh man, so I kind of have this like sinking feeling. Today's gonna to be a bit of a challenge. The tide already is absolutely not cooperating, but you know, let's, let's try to think positive, see what happens. All right, this is looking kind of promising. I'm thinking to myself, maybe on the way back, this is something I can kind of comb through. I'm just at this point, I'm not gonna slow down. Well, all right, maybe just for this one. Yeah, it's a fighting conch. Holy cow, it's pretty. So yeah, just doing a quick reconnaissance. All right, we'll check this out later because I'm still, I'm trucking. I'm trying to get to my spot. Now, there's a building that really got hammered during Hurricane Ian, and they have built a new wall here. You'll see that new wall on the left. And then you have all this rip riprap on the bottom. So I've done this before. I've you know walked around here, so I'm feeling pretty confident and um, perhaps just a little bit too confident because I did lose my footing and I have all my equipment on me and I go down. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I've got my whole backpack, my phone, all my equipment. So yeah, obviously I have my camera above the water at this point, but uh, yeah, I <laughs> was not expecting that so i'm completely soaked from neck to foot i'm totally totally soaked i'm like okay well <laughs> that that was unexpected and uh, okay so the next thing i do is check my bag and the equipment and i'm gonna um give a shout out to this backpack because everything stayed dry everything i'm gonna put a link in the description box below if you're in the market for a really good waterproof backpack so if you remember, it's in the high 60s. It's not so bad. I'm a little cold because I'm soaking wet, but whatever, right? I, I made it. I I'm kind of at the promised land of, of where I'm hoping to find some seashells. Look at this. Now I know it's a mama. It's gonna be a female. Yep, 
because of the size. So the females are the ones that get really big. Isn't that beautiful? So that is a living lightning whelk. I did a quick peek. I figured it was gonna be alive, but I wanted to just kind of confirm, oh, it's so beautiful. So that's living, that's gonna stay here. What else? This is kind of the, kind of the area I had wanted to beachcomb. So that's a rose petal talon and a lightning whelk. Okay, not too, too bad. And look at all this. So obviously the, uh, the wind was churning up the manatee grass. So that's what all that white stuff is. That is manatee grass that has just washed up onto the beach. I was kind of hoping for shell piles. Okay, well, that's okay. We'll, all right, get this sand dollar. Angel wing. Now, if you were with me last week when it was really windy on Sanibel, I could not get an angel wing that was not broken. So already my look is a little different. It's going to be better. I don't know. We'll see. So this is a noblest fighting conch. I just kind of think that they're interesting. The shape is completely different. So the one on the left will be noblest, and then your fighting conch on the right has that extra row of knobs there. Kind of cool. Just some of the things that interest me about these seashells. Now, who ordered the ducks? I don't know that I've ever seen ducks on the beach. So these are likely modeled ducks, or they're called mo modeled mallards. Then maybe that wind disoriented them. I'm not sure, but never saw ducks on the beach. Okay, so this area, to me, there should not be this much water here. And I'm, I'm kind of bummed, honestly. I'm like, man, this is just not the conditions I was hoping for. These are operculums. Now, that's interesting that the wind would kind of, like, kick up all of those operculums. But, yeah, not what I expected. Now, this was a little bit more what I expected. See how much beach is on the left? This is what I have today lots of water and this is essentially the same spot and then when i pan over here you're going to see yeah, the, look at how far up the water comes so the tide is supposed to be out it's just not cooperating but i'm going to persevere i'm going to push through now if i did keep that sand dollar I would have put it in this delicates container. At least that's what I call it. Grab anything, any kind of Tupperware or hard container, stick that in your shell bag and that'll protect your delicates. And I did a little bit of battle with that garbage bag, but I won. I'm taking that garbage bag off the beach. Another angel wing, isn't that funny? I could not find one that was not broken. And here we go. I already have two, three, three angel wings and Different beaches are just different. I do tend to find a lot of angel wings on Fort Myers Beach. Not the big ones. The smaller ones are so much more delicate. So I'm just grabbing all of them. Some of them will probably break. The smaller ones, I think I'm gonna start putting in my delicates container because they really, they just don't survive. All right, this is looking a little better now. Finally, okay, all right. At least there's a little bit of a pile here. Okay, so now I'm getting kind of excited, all right. What is here? Obviously, there's some big old beach bowls, the Atlantic giant cockles. Okay, here is a calico clam, two calico clams, excellent. I'll grab that. Finally. <laughs> so I've been dunked in the water. I've been, you know, humping up the beach and probably about two miles from where I got onto the beach. Yeah, I think that's tube coral, which is a stony coral and is illegal to collect in Florida. I can't believe it. So I'm not going to collect that. I'll talk about that more in depth in a future episode, but we're going to leave the coral on the beach for now. That's another angel wing. Oh, so many cockles and, that, and the pen shells. That's what I expect to see. What do we got here? Oh, banded tulip. Yeah, you're a little broken. You were hanging out with some barnacles. Another angel wing. Terrific. Here we have, that is a pear whelk. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The water is trying to take my shells. Okay, so I'm feeling some pressure now because I know the tide is coming in and I finally found this good spot and the, the ocean is going to try to take it from me. So in my head, I'm going kind of like speed shelling that would have been a really nice true tulip. And what I'm trying to do is I see what's here, but I'm also kind of trying to look around it because my brain is so happy that there's so much here, but 
I don't want to get too overwhelmed and actually miss things. So that's an apple murex, or phylonotum, or phylonotus pomum. Uh, it'll take me a couple of weeks, but that's the scientific name, phylonotus pomum. Oh, nice nutmeg. All right, it's got a little hole in it. Today, though, I am collecting stuff that I normally wouldn't collect, and I'm gonna try to get it to some seashell crafters. Get some of this stuff up on my Etsy store. Ah, oh, yeah, size is great. It's a little dry. I, it's, I don't know how else to explain it. It's, it's a little beach worn. I'm gonna still hold on to it though. Oh, you are so pretty. Fighting conch, yeah. Yep, you are lovely and golden. Oh, look at the second row of spikes on that. Oh, that is so cool. So that's a crown conch. Oh, that is awesome. And a second one, not quite as stunning as that first one, but that's still not, not too shabby. I'm gonna hold on to that too. And I again, I know the tide's coming in, so I have to kind of just keep pushing through. Okay, here's a little moon snail. I know, I saw that angel wing. I don't know if I go back and get it. Fighting conchs, what else? There's another fighting conch. And, oh, so that was an apple murex, but it is attached to that piece of pen shell. And all right, another with a rock in it, another calico clam. Pen shells, fighting conchs, Venus clams. What do we got here? Oh, that's a really nice apple murex. Look at the size of that. Oh, and then this horse conch, because I like them. I'm going to keep it anyway. Eh, it's most of a horse conch. I can probably get that beach stuff off. So, yeah, I'm going to hold on to those. Okay, what else? I see that spiny jewel box. Yep, so we have a hinged. Oh, look at how spiny it is. It's a hinged spiny jewel box. Oh, that's so pretty, like a honey color. Beautiful fighting conch. Okay, what else? There's another, oh, there's a nice pair of walk with some good color on it. Looks like the sun came out. Awesome pair of walk. Oh, good, there's still more shells. So this is the section I wanted to get to when I was kind of like hoofing it in the beginning of the video. This is where I wanted to be. I had to walk here. I only had so much time. Look at this. Oh. So yeah, I kind of had to like sprint down the uh, the beach. Maybe that's why I fell in the water. I just wasn't paying attention. I don't know. I was like, I was excited to come here. So we have another kind of a green apple murex and a hinge spiny jewel box and oh, 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 so many goodies. All right, another moon snail. Yeah, it's broken, but you know what? Maybe somebody else can do something with that. Lightning whelk. Very another angel yeah that's a little broken so the distocenias i don't think i even collected any of those today another lightning so the the white shells those white shells that are hinged that are all over those are distocenias looking looking oh you're so pretty like a delicate white plus i love the fighting conch so yep you're coming home with me Oh, yay, there's still shells. So it's funny how the beach changes, right? Like, so when I got onto the beach, this is about two miles from the spot that I got on. And just access here is tough. There's just no good way to get down here. Just somebody recommended maybe getting an Uber, maybe Ubering to the south end of the island. But I will admit it is, it's just, it's not easy true tulip you're so pretty and you're missing a little bit of color but fabulous so that's a true tulip much much more rare than the banded tulip another shark eye most of us yeah it's like 95 percent of a shark eye that's pretty the little blue paul newman shark eye oh and a murex is that a lace nope based on that aperture i'm gonna go with the uh apple murex I see a flash of purple, so the interior of another one of those 
spiny jewel boxes. Oh, they're so formidable. And a little top snail. Oh, that's kind of broken. That's okay though. Top snail, spiny jewel box, and a lightning whelk to round out the trio of shelves. Oh, there we go. There's a, well, <laughs> it is a banded tulip. It's missing its top, so I'm probably not gonna collect that. Another lightning whelk. Yeah, they're pretty common, the lightning whelks. Not quite as common as the fighting conks, my favorite show. That is awesome. And I am not leaving you at the beach. That's a Sunray Venus clam. I just have, I like those shells anyway. And it had kind of a cool, cool pattern on it. Okay. Now what's going on here, there's a lot of the same shell, but that is another pear whelk. Another little angel wing, are you broken? No, nope, you're fine. Excellent. Another angel wing and pear whelk. Oh yeah, there's yet another one. And I will, the, the angel wings that survive, that are really kind of grimy, I will soak them in bleach. All right, that lightning whelk, yeah, you're, you're great. You're a great lightning whelk. So the angel wings, I will soak in bleach. Oh, another one of those apple murex, just kind of hanging out on a ponderous arc. You do you, that is just fine. And what, yeah, just a piece, yeah, piece of a moon snail. Doesn't hurt to check it out, you never know. Okay, another lightning whelk. So it's funny, again, just trying to make a comparison. The beach was totally flat when I first got on it. And then look at this. Oh, so I combed this area a couple times. I kind of went back and forth a couple of times because that is a moon snail. And as the tide comes in, it will push new shells in, or at least that's been my experience. So two lovely moon snails. Oh, this is kind of neat. So this they call a crucifix shell. It's actually the skull of a catfish, but you can see it does look kind of like a crucifix. So they do call that a crucifix shell. Probably will end, that'll end up on Etsy at some point. The Florida prickly cockle. I love this shell. Very common, just, it's got a great texture on the outside and that beautiful color on the inside. The Florida prickly cockle. All right, we've got a couple of these. Yeah, it's a pretty good looking shell, an apple murex. Doing pretty okay on those today. At least I'm finding shells. I was worried there for a minute and then I went for a swim unintentionally, but here we are, right? Yeah. Another pear whelk. Awesome. Oh my goodness. This has been fabulous, but it's really pretty. And I think it's time for me to be quiet and for you to enjoy some beach time. All right, crown conch, yes, that is a crown conch, although I have found fighting conchs that actually kind of have that same striping on it. Oh, buddy. All right, so this is a banded tulip and it is alive. So earlier we had picked up all those operculum. That is the animal's operculum right there. So this animal is not done with its operculum. It is holding on to it. It's a little trap door, kind of helps protect it. So I'm gonna dig a little hole at my heel try as I might to get the critters back into the water. See what else might be out here. Oh, our decorated trees. This kind of makes me think of like, you know, before the hurricane, we had so much more greenery. Now the beach is really, it's pretty stripped from a, you know, greenery standpoint, but we do what we can. We're finding our, our seashells and putting on what little, <laughs> what little bushes and whatnot can hold them. So all the way out there is gonna be Lover's Key. And I've gone as far as I'm gonna go south at this point. The tide is coming in so fast and so high. I do think the wind was working against me. Yes, yay, it helped get the stuff onto the beach, but it was also pushing the water up. Another angel wing? Sure. Oh, 
Well, I thought I was going for the tiger list, but I was going for the channeled duck clam. So that's what that lovely little channeled shell is. That's also called a sailor's ear. Oh, oh my goodness. Look at you. Like a perfect, gorgeous nutmeg. Oh, you're so pretty. Yeah, so I, shelling at low tide is, in my opinion, the best. It is just easier. It exposes more beach right now. Yeah, the tide, it, allegedly it's at 0.96. I think that it's much higher and luckily it's still in the high 60s so I I wasn't too 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 uncomfortable walking the beach completely soaked I uh, managed to dry off a little bit and it wasn't so bad right hinged spiny jewel box oh oh it's awesome yeah I, I don't think I'd ever get tired of seeing those spiny jewel box actually I feel that way about a lot of these shells isn't that beautiful but at this point, I've combed a couple times. I've kind of gone back and forth in this section just to make sure I don't leave this chestnut turban behind. One lone chestnut turban. That's fine. One's enough. All right, what else is going to pique my attention? The white Atlantic semi. That I really want to call the pink zigzag shell, but we'll we'll go with white Atlantic simile. And my brain is so happy, but I'm kind of trying to like look in between the shells and around them because obviously the ones that are obvious are really pulling my attention. But I'm really looking for the special ones like this lace murex. This is the only one we've gotten so far today. So they do look a little bit like the apple murex. They're just a little longer and their aperture, the opening a little smaller. Oh, the Atlantic giant cockle. These just, they're so beautiful, but they don't always stay that beautiful. When they dry out, they look a little different. We're gonna compare that. The end of the video, we'll look and see what that looks like. Once it's come completely dry, we'll just kind of compare the before and the after. This one's broken. So this is another one of those crucifix shells. And since I already have one, I'm not going to collect this. Just kind of interesting. This one's a little darker. Actually, I kind of like the color of that one a little better, but we'll leave that for someone else. All right, let's see what else we got. This was so sad. So this is a sea hare. I have not seen one in so long. This poor creature was just sitting on the beach there. So I'm going to get it back into the water. They're also called ink fish maybe because they will um a purple dye they'll kind of like let that's what that purple color is so they can kind of let go of that purple color so i got that beautiful animal into the water and i kind of just kept an eye on it it didn't get washed back onto the shore so i'm hoping it was alive and it kind of did its thing so that's what i was hoping for so that was a sea hare it's unfortunate they're absolutely stunning they look like they're kind of like flying in the water they're so beautiful Oh, speaking of so beautiful, holy cow. Yes, I heard you, gorgeous orange fighting conch. Do not worry. I was not going to leave you behind. Wow. I have a thing for orange shells anyway. Oh, it's so pretty. So that's my most favorite fighting conch today. And this, the Florida prickly cockle. Now this is probably, it's gotta be the most common albino shell that I find. So normally it's supposed to look like that. But I feel like like every other week, like pretty often I find the albino version. I still like them though. The Florida prickly cockle. All right, a couple of my bird friends here. Yep, and I'm meandering and I'm gonna have to do battle with that wall again in a little bit. That's okay, that's coming up. It's in the back of my head. I'm thinking about it. So that are egg casings from a moon snail. It's called a moon snail collar or a sand collar. And there was just this area where there were so many pieces of them. Why? Oh, and they were just kind of broken. So what this moon snail does is it kind of, it lays the eggs and it kind of mixes this with like a, kind of like a gelatin that it produces and sand. And the entire thing will be kind of circular, but they're just kind of pieces all over the place. Yeah, that sand dollar is broken. So, and I see more of that manatee grass again. So we're back into kind of that section of the beach. 
Yep, that is a white Atlantic simile. It is a little on the orange side. Fun. It still, it really irritates me that the name of the shell is white and it's not. It's a colorful moon snail. This one's not so colorful. It's been hanging out a little while, but it kind of has the same colors as the lightning whelk. So we have a colorful moon snail and a little lightning whelk. Oh, a little urchin with, yeah, some little manatee grass in there. That is fine. So that's going to go in my little delicates container. No way would that survive just in my shell bag. But that container will protect that urchin from getting all broken. Same with this. So this sand dollar will also go in that same container. Awesome. So the five hole keyhole sand dollar. Yeah, our sand dollars have keyholes in them. Not all sand dollars do. They're urchins. There's all different flavors of urchins. So I know it's not lumpy. I wish there was more lumps. And originally I thought I might be looking for tiny shells today. I was going to maybe go to Lighthouse Beach, but this is really just crushed up pieces. I'm not seeing the tinies. And because of all the wind, I wanted to come over here to Fort Myers Beach to see what might have gotten pushed up onto the beach. So, yep, there's that wall I'm going to do battle with. But I learned a really valuable lesson and no harm, really no harm happened. So... Here we are safely on the other side of that that wall and this conch so this is a crown conch and these are one of my favorite shells to clean so it's possible that this shell will show up again in the future this well kind of dirty crown conch a broad ribbed cardita relatively common one of my i just really like them and a rose petal talon so yes those rose petal talons I'm going to say Fort Myers Beach is your best bet if you want to find one of those lovely pink shells. So I'm pretty well dry at this point. Today did not, I was not expecting to go for that little swim. And look, there's some things that you just can't prepare for. But what I always, always, always have on me is this bug barrier by Sea Anchored Secrets. Now, I did not encounter any of those no sea bugs today, but I'm always prepared. It comes in this cute little carry-on that was in my backpack, so it did not get soaking wet. If you want to carry some just in case, I do recommend it. Head on over to Sea Anchored Secrets and use code SWF for $5 off your order. Okay, so this, I, this is a ribbed mussel. I normally, honestly, don't really pay a lot of attention to the mussels, but last, or I don't know, it wasn't last week, a couple weeks ago, we did find that scorched mussel. This is a ribbed mussel. Kind of neat. Not gonna collect it, but still I wanna just know what it is. And this I am gonna collect. I just like these. Constricted Marcoma. A very long name for this very pretty white shell. Constricted Marcoma. So I am glad that I ended up back over on Fort Myers Beach. I do think with the beach conditions and the winds and everything, it would have been a real struggle to find tinies over at Lighthouse. So I'm glad I came here. Thank you, Fort Myers Beach. It was quite an interesting day for sure. Now, I did in the beginning kind of find a little bit of garbage. It totaled 5.45 ounces. So in total, I have removed almost 50 pounds of garbage off the beach, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty, I'm pretty psyched about that. And then today I did manage to find a couple of things. We have that crucifix shell, all those operculums, one worm snail, that uh, urchin, the sand dollars, and then that giant Atlanta cockle, one turkey wing, another giant Atlanta cockle, all the sunray Venus clams. I did get a couple of those. The prickly cockles, the Florida prickly cockle, one yellow prickly cockle up there, a buttercup leucine, some of those broad rib carditas, a horse conch, see some jingles, some uh, coquinas, the Florida fighting conchs, Lovely. And then on the bottom there, we have some of those. Oh, I picked up a lot of the calico clams, one top snail, some of those rose petal talons, the white Atlantic semblies. We have a purplish tigulus, some lettered olives, pointed Venus clams, moon snails, nutmegs, spiny jewel box. I see a couple of slipper snails, apple murex. And then left, we have pear whelks, a one lace murex. There is one uh, chestnut turban up there too. A couple of those calico scallops, some lightning whelks, and then I did finally get a bunch of those angel wings. So those are the ones that survived. And then my favorites today was the true tulip, that big apple murex, that lovely fighting conch, and that awesome crown conch. Now there's just two other things I want to show you. Remember this giant Atlanta cockle? In the interior of that shell is so beautiful. But 
it's wet and it's kind of deceiving. Once it dries, that's actually what it looks like. But I'm thinking of maybe playing with resin. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's something I could do with that. And then I also made this rather bold prediction at the beginning of the video. I said, that shell's gonna clean up real pretty. And it did. I like the delicate kind of like checkered pattern underneath. I don't love those white lines. So I put some mineral oil on the shell and then rubbed it off real good with like a washcloth to try to get rid of those white lines. It works a little bit. I don't dip fighting conks in acid and I do. I owe you guys an acid video. So I'll start working on that hopefully real soon. Patreons, thank you. Thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart for even considering to support me and yet you do it. So truly, thank you so very much for watching, for supporting me, for your comments, for everything. I really, really appreciate you. Next week, I went shelling with a buddy. So we're going to find out who that buddy was and what all we found next week. So until then, I hope you have yourself a great week and I'll see you again next Sunday.